Okay, what's up, people? Tonight, I'm not going to do a quick video, but I'm going to do an introduction to a new series that I'm doing, and it's called Holding Police Officers Liable. The first one I'm going to do is Wrongful Death. And the reason why this came to me, it was the fact of getting an understanding of what wrongful death is and why it needs to be pursued. Now, we're looking at an epidemic of police shootings that are caught on video. And the conversation is police are held accountable because taxpayers are paying for body cams. The issue that I have now with this as an escalating issue is the fact that you have a First Amendment right to record the police officers while performing their duties because of the Freedom of Information Act, which has a section strictly for photography and news gathering called the Open Government Act of 2007. Now, going from that, when you look at why we're having these type issues, they are attempting to stop people from videotaping them. They're doing things such as flashing their um, flashlights in the cameras, which is a violation. They're standing in front of situations while things are going on to cover up things that they're doing. When you now go into holding them accountable, they love to say, oh, well, you don't need to record because see that camera right there we're recording or i have dashboard camera or i have a dashboard footage the issue is 76 percent of all video that is seen or made available for court does not come from officers it comes from pedestrians so if 76 percent of all police incidents do not come from police officers, why should we trust the fact that they are actually going to hold themselves accountable or even do the right thing? So here's my thing. I'm going to bring up the case of the Cynthia Clement. Little backstory, young lady, she was in Chicago and Lieutenant Christian Jensen took it upon himself after 40 minutes of audible audio from a SWAT captain that stated non-lethal force would be used in bringing her in. Even having her surrounded as well as being prepped for tasing her. Lieutenant Christian Jensen took it upon himself to release a single shot into the head of Decynthia Clement, killing her. Now, how does that tie into wrongful death? I'm going to bring that back in just a second, but here's, here's what wrongful death is. Wrongful death is a common law interest that can be brought in through the decedents or the decedents administrators which will be guardians or those that are in immediate family and the immediate family will be husband wife which is spouse or adult child now or in some cases such as the Trayvon Martin situation would be the parents of the decedent now the causes for wrongful death. A wrongful act, negligence, carelessness, unskillfulness, occupational exposure to hazardous conditions or standards. The reason why that last one is important is because police officers have a fiduciary duty of upholding and protecting its citizens. Now, before they are given a taser, as an example, each police officer must be tased. So, 
understanding they understand the pain that is going to cause and if you also look at the fact that police officers are given up to five non-lethal items for protecting human life prior to any call such as pepper spray or mace they have their baton they are trained with hand-to-hand -hand combat they again have their taser if they've been certified and in the case of Decynthia Clement they were ordered to have rubber bullets and in you look at the Michael Brown case they were told to have bean bags so again non-lethal force now we're going to go into that because understanding the carelessness or unskillfulness there were multiple orders given for non-lethal force lieutenant christian jensen chose to take the life of the cynthia for whatever reason here's the bottom line his actions caused her death so therefore in the state of illinois each wrongful death complaint or situational case arises at the moment of death each one has a statute of limitations that a a lawsuit can be filed and what a lot of people do they want to wait to after if they're going to be charges filed if they're going to be a conviction what I want to harken back to is to look at the OJ Simpson trial while OJ Simpson was in criminal court he was actually found guilty in civil court for wrongful death of Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown Simpson so you do not have to wait because it's a part of the Federal Tort Claims Act so it is codified in federal law and the state that the excuse me the case that actually brings this up or begins this tort is Kingston versus US 1967 and another one of the things that was actually brought up later regarding the shooting of Decynthia Clement was the fact that right after Lieutenant Christian Jensen killed her caused her death by shooting her in the head he made statements that were horribly false he also forgot that his microphone was on while he was making these statements to another officer and the thing is there are several things that are taking place when going into court for wrongful death and holding them accountable because you remember one of the earlier videos I spoke about not taking officer Jensen into court you take Christian Jensen into court and you hold Christian Jensen responsible in his personal capacity now here are a couple things that are going to be um, that are going to be needed or brought up for the case to be heard in federal court basically it's going to start off with the place of the injury because it was on an interstate it is federal you're going to look at defendant action and again we spoke about defendant actions through the occup occupational exposure to hazardous condition or standard which is also caused by wrongful acts or negligence and for the most part because it took place in the state of Illinois depending on what federal court is closest or handles that area will depend will depict the actual filing for that case and the people that can bring it in will also determine 
that party's relationship to Decynthia. So understanding caused by wrongful acts, negligence, carelessness, unskillfulness, default negligence, occupational exposure to hazardous conditions or standards. These are all things that are present whenever police officers do not perform their duty properly and a life is taken when they have multiple non-lethal measures available to them. So this is actually where I'm going to close this video, but I'm going to put together a couple more videos which also speak about breaches of fiduciary duty, even the Criminals Act, because of when they are doing illegal searches or illegal seizures because we spoke about the fourth amendment stops when they're telling you to go stay and they're reaching out for you and a lot of my first amendment auditors when they're reaching for your cameras or they're knocking your cameras out of your hand that is intentional damage that is also a federal crime so understanding those situations i'm going to go deeper into those so right now we're dealing with wrongful death and there is a multitude of those that are going on across the country. So, for right now, wrongful death, that's it for that one. I'm going to go deeper into it. I'll probably also do a live for bringing together a few more of these cases because that's what it was originally going to be. So, but until next time.